the first things you want to do after installing the Venus 1500 software is configure the software to communicate with the display. The process for doing this is to go into the Administrator tab, which is off to the right of the shell. If this is the first time that you have been in the Administrator program, you will be prompted to configure the display and run the display wizard. So go ahead and click on Yes. The first window of the display wizard is asking you whether you want to auto-detect or manually create a display. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose auto-detect. And since we haven't been into the software before and do not have any network resources configured, at this point we have to go ahead and configure or create a new network. The next screen is asking us what type of network we want to configure. We're going to go ahead and choose Direct Network for this example and click on Next at the bottom. The following dialog box asks us which COM port on our computer is connecting with the display. If you're not sure what COM port you're using on your computer to connect up with a display, you can easily find out in the Device Manager of My Computer. In this example, we happen to be using a COM5. So we're going to click on Next, and in the following window, we need to enter how many displays are in our network port. In this case, we have only one display that we're connecting up to. You can see on the right here that you could have up to 240 different displays. We're going to go on and click on Next at the bottom, and you'll see that it's going through a scanning process. Once this is done, the next screen tells us that we have successfully connected to the display, and all of the settings are gathered at the bottom here. You can see that this is a Galaxy 16x64 full-color RGB that I'm connected to using a version 3 controller. Up at the top by default, it always labels the first display as Display 1. You can highlight that and change the name to whichever you'd like to use, and once you have that in, we'll click on Next at the bottom. The next window that pops up is asking us for which time zone we're using our display in. Central time zone is always negative 6, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that in as the time zone that I'm operating out of. And down below is a checkbox for DST, or Daylight Saving Time. Now if you're in an area that does recognize Daylight Saving Time, be sure to leave the box checked to automatically have this display change time for you. Then click on Next. And at this point, our auto detection is complete, so we'll go ahead and click on Finish. A window pops up asking us to import animations for this new display that we've configured. We'll insert the disk and click on Yes, and the next window will ask us which display we want to import those animations for. So I'll just select it with my mouse and click on Import, which prompts a window telling us that it's importing those animations off the CD and onto the hard drive. Once that's done, the administrator window pops up. You can see on the left here, I have a Galaxy 16x64 RGB type configured. And if I click on the plus next to the V3, there's my Dactronix 1 display that I just configured and all of the corresponding settings. Up at the top, if I click on the Network Configuration button, I have a plus next to Direct Networks, and there's the COM5 connection that I've just set up to communicate with the display. At this point, your display is configured and you can exit out of the administrator tool and go on to use the other applications.